Come on, put your hands together, give God a praise for all of these hands. Come on, come on, open up your mouth and give God a praise. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a good thing to be able to gather together, though we are gathered virtually. We know that the Lord is with us right where we are. We welcome you today, amen, to this our virtual feast Sunday worship. We praise God for the sons of Adam being in charge of our worship. Praise God for all of our worship participants today. We will have the court of worship by Brother Nathan Kirk. Following that, we'll have our opening prayer by Brother Lawrence Sampson. Our scripture lessons, the Old Testament, will be done by Brother Troy Washington. The Gospel will be done by Brother Damien Purdy. And then we'll have our welcome to our online worship by Brother Victor Cooks. Praise God, how we honor God for all of you. The call to worship. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with, with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with song. For the Lord is the great God, and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are, also, are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Amen. <laughs>
to pray for myself, not just for my loved ones, not just for the people of this church, but I am praying for the world itself. We pray for the lives lost to police brutality. We pray for the lives lost during this outbreak of COVID-19. We pray for all the strong parents who are still taking care of their children and their family members. We pray for the families who are suffering at this very moment. We give thanks to you, God, for keeping those with us safe. We are thankful for still having our health and keeping our families together. Dear God, we ask for the strength to keep us pushing through this year, not only because of this virus that's killing thousands of people. Give us strength because the fight for equality for all people is still going on. Give us the strength to make the right decisions, not just for us, but for the generations to come. We are the sheep and you are our shepherd. God us with your holy power. We ask this in your name. Amen. I'll be reading from the Old Testament, the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen or cry out to me. Violence, but do you not save? Why do you make me look in, at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Dest destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed, and justice never prevails. The wicked hymn and the righteous, so that justice is perverted. Look at the nations and watch, and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told the word of God for his people. Good morning. I'll be reading the gospel lesson from Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. Love, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Good morning. Welcome to our virtual church service. We hope to enjoy your time here and a thought for the week. Let your smile change the world, but don't let the world change your smile. Beloved brothers and sisters, would you just join me as we thank our Brother Victor Cooks, amen, for the wonderful words of welcome to this worship. We praise God for him. And let me remind you today to please make sure that you're in prayer for those families that are in bereavement and those who stand in need of our prayers because he and Alan will believe that prayer still works. Let me also remind you that whenever you are going out in public, make sure that you wash your hands Watch your distance and wear your mask. We want to make sure that you are safe and staying healthy in this pandemic. We also want to remind all of our members to make sure that you are reaching out to those members, amen, that need us reaching out to, amen, because during this season, people need to be able to hear a word of encouragement and a word of inspiration. We also want to remind you that Monday through Friday, we have our, our prayer, a prayer line, amen, from 6.30 until 7 a.m. It's a wonderful time to get together and to hear what the Lord has to say to us. And beloved, whenever we gather together for worship, we also have an opportunity to share with our gifts. The Lord has been good to us. The Lord has blessed us. And so we come today encouraging each one of you that you'll be able to share with your gifts, your tithes, your public offering, your facing offering. The reason why our ministry continues to impact the giving community, reaching out to others, is because of your faithfulness, your consistent giving, that we're able to make a difference in somebody else's life. When you ask that question, well, Reverend, I'm not at the church. How can I be able to give? I'm not there at Allen. How can I be able to share? Well, right down at the bottom of the screen, you can be able to share by going to Giveify and share with your gifts. Or you can mail in your gift to 
Holland Chapel Area Church, PO Box 9717, Daytona Beach, Florida 32120. Or you can come by the church office Monday through Thursday from 9 until 3 p.m. Again, we are grateful to God for your faithfulness to sow the seed in good ground as we share today in the joy of giving. My brothers and sisters, I'm glad today to have one of our members, amen, who has come to Island Chapel and serving faithfully in the life of the church. I believe that God has called him for a special purpose for such a time as this. Brother Emmanuel Swift is our preacher, amen, for today. A wonderful preacher, well-prepared preacher, amen, passionate preacher. And as good a preacher as he is, he still needs our prayers, he still needs our amens. So right where you are, you may be in your home, you may be in your car, or you may be in your office. I'm asking you to pray with him and pray for him as he brings forth the word of the Lord on today. After the next selection by our prayer team, the next voice you will hear is that of our brother, our friend, Brother Emmanuel Swift.
I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. It is indeed an honor to be at this sacred desk one more time. And I thank the shepherd of this house, Dr. McCullough and First Lady Tammy McCullough, for this is indeed an honor. And I do not take it lightly. God is really doing something in this season, and he's getting ready to manifest his power. And if you want to see the will of God, the power of God, you have to position yourself for a time such as this. You have to draw nigh unto him because he wants to draw nigh unto you. So good and gracious God, thank you for your holy word. Thank you for your omnipotent power. Thank you for seeing us through another day. Thank you for allowing us to be, come before your throne of grace to worship, to praise you. Father God, before we ever ask for anything, we give you the adoration. Lord, you're great. Lord, you're wonderful. Lord, you're magnificent. Lord, you're the God that reigns high and look low. But you keep us right where you want us to be in perfect peace. So God, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we have asked for. Lord, as I decrease, I ask that you increase, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you're my redeemer and my way maker. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I would like to lay for a textual foundation for our small time together, and I'm going to have you do a little work for me. I'm going to start with Psalms 51, verses 10 through 12. And I then want you to flip over to Romans chapter 12, 1 through the third verse. And this is coming from the New International Version. That's Psalms, the 51st chapter, the 10th through the 12th verse. And then we will flip over to Romans chapter 12, and we will lift up verses 1 the third verse and God's word according to Psalm 51 and it reads at verse 10 created me a pure heart O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me restore me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And then we'll flip over to Romans chapter 12. And we'll begin at the first verse. And the Bible declared, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Oh, beloved, we're living in a day and time that we are sleep, slipping out of the will of God. We're living in a day and time where Christians are losing their sight from the will of God. We're living in a day and time where people are hurting and they have stopped believing in the manifestation of God. We are living in a day and time where we allowed a pandemic to consume our psychological perspectives where we begin to stress and worry about how we're going to make it through. We, we, we begin to stress over the small stuff that God has already designed for us to go through because everything happens for a reason. And as a people and as believers of God, we have slipped from the very presence of where God wants to take us. So I want to lay for a foundational message today for believers. And I'm coming to get somebody today because somebody got to be revived and restored. I'm coming to get somebody today because I believe that God is getting ready to do the supernatural in this season. And I'm going to lay for a foundational text 
on these two scriptures and I hope that it will provide the edification and the revelation that brings God's confirmation, that brings God's manifestation. And I hope that you get something out of this because I am determined to get somebody in this message. My topic for foundational message today is broken, but better. Broken, but better. In order to get to where we need to be, which is on the other side of this pandemic, we as Christians are going to have to go through the process of being molded and redesigned in God. We as Christians have to really find where our position is in God because we allow a pandemic to alter and knock us off kilter in where God has assigned and ordained for such a time as this. We were just like Peter when Peter got out of the boat and was bid to come forward and just at a moment the winds began to rage and I'm reminded that Peter took his eyes off of God just for a second and Peter began to sink. But the God I serve reached out and stretched out his hand and he was able to pull Peter forward. Oh, I believe that we got some people in the church today that have taken their eyes off God and they're getting ready to drown, but God said, I got you where I want you to be. And sometimes it's going to require you to be broken. It's going to require you to be molded and be in place on the potter's wheel. And how many of you know that it's not always comfortable being on the potter's wheel? Because I believe that something happens when God puts you on the potter's wheel. He has to mold. He has to shake. He has to take you to the beating, the pressing, and the shaking so that the oil of you can flow, so that the oil of God can flow, flow out of you. And so he has to reshape you. He has to rekindle your fire. And so as we break down this topic, of uh, this foundational topic, broken but better, I want to leave you with three points. And I'm going to get get on your on my way and I won't be before you too long but I want to um, give you some tools that will enhance your ability to make it in a systematic um, society like this. I, I, I want to give you some tools that are going to allow you to be able to defeat the wiles of the enemy, to defeat the tax of the enemy, to, to tear down strongholds of the enemy. And I'm going to leave you with these three points. Point number one. In order to see, see God's manifestation, you have to be willing to submit to God's perfect plans. Submission is required when you are seeking a closeness with God. What do you mean, preacher? In order for God to do a greater work in your life, you have to be willing to submit. Time is God. And in order to receive the manifold blessings of God, you have to be willing to wait on him. What do you mean, preacher? I got to wait on God. When the bills can't get paid, I submit to the will of God to know that if it is not paid today, God is preparing my future and my present. So I have the present help and the peace to know that God is getting ready to do something supernatural. Waiting and submitting to the perfect will of God will require you to have ample time because I serve a God that he may not come when you want it, but he shows up right in the nick of time. How many of us can say that we have the time to wait on God? How many of, how many of us can say we submitted to God, but we don't want all that God has for us, so we submit partially to the will of God, and we get impatient when we have to go through a season of waiting. Beloved, I'm here to tell you that something happens when you submit to the process and to the will of God because God wants you to learn something in that season of waiting. I have made up in my mind that I am not going to move by my own power, that I am unapologetically, uh, I'm an unapologetic for my worship and I choose to submit to the will of God 
And I believe that when I wait in the presence of God, I know that he's working out my future in my current present situation. See, God didn't allow you to move ahead of him because he knew that you wouldn't have been able to face the test of time. Oh, beloved, I've been in a season of fasting and praying, and God has me um, in a season of getting up at 5 a.m. to pray, to meditate, to uh, read my daily devotional. And one thing that I really understood um, at the beginning of August, um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I was able to connect with a good friend of mine, and she reminded me that I needed to fast. And anytime you can connect yourself with other believers that can tell you some stuff when you say, my, my ear is not in a position right now to hear from God, and I don't know what it is, but I'm a little bit off balance, and I'm not hearing from God. Something has to happen. And she said to me, when was the last time you fast? And I said, that's a good question. And I had to self-check myself. And I made up in my mind at that very moment, um, August, uh, July 30th, that I was going to start a fast on August 1st. And I've been fasting on August 1st because if, if I am to see the salvation of God, the manifold blessing, the power of God in my life and through the circumstances that I face, I must be, I have to be willing to submit and give up some things that I that necessarily is not getting me to my destiny. Who am I talking to today? I had to make up in my mind that I am going to serve God. I'm going to give him all of me. I surrendered my life, my body as a yielded sacrifice to God, to building up the kingdom of God. But I had to sacrifice. What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to do to see the man but stole wisdom of God? Oh, beloved, I'm reminded that as I was, as I, as I've been praying and fasting, I was given a book to read. And see, sometimes when you submit to God, I have to give you this, 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 this disclaimer because when you submit to God, I want to be very clear that the walk is not easy. Mm -hmm. That when you choose to submit to God, you're saying, I submit to every wow of the enemy because something happens when you submit to God. So hear, hear me out. So as I began fasting, my uncle on my wife's side of the family, who's an apostle, we had a conversation a couple weeks ago when he was in town. He said, I'm teaching from the book, Pigs in a Parlor. I said, okay, interesting. We started talking about it. He started explaining. We started um, having a dialogue. And before I knew it, I was getting a little happy. And I had to uh, break it down a notch because something about that book, it, was, it, it seemed very, you know, a funny name, Pigs in a Parlor. So I went home, and that thing stopped with me until I got up again at 5 a.m. for my daily devotion, my scripture reading, and my meditation. And the Holy Spirit rested upon me to download the audio book, the audio, the audio book version of the book. It was $9. I encourage you to read it, but I have to tell you before you decide to open up that book, Pigs in the Parlor. Because what I did not understand when I began to read it is that my uncle did not give me the disclaimer that I was learning the attacks of the enemy. He did not tell me that when I started studying what the devil tries to do to take out his people, he intensified his attacks on my life. And, and at the moment when I started reading that book, I, I made it all the way to chapter 7 within two days and before I knew it. The devil didn't like me knowing his tactics. So my school, last week when we opened back up the school and the teachers came in, the devil decided that he was going to burst one of the pipes in the wall. And so as human individuals that we are, we allow our flesh to sometimes get the best of us because even when it don't look like it, even when you can't trace him, God is always there. But in the midst of that adversity, you just, you, we, we, 
we began to worry, we began to fret, and the Holy Spirit allowed me to hit my custodial worker on the shoulder. And I said, it's all right. It's going to be all right. We'll, 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 we'll get through this. I'm not stressing. We're going to be all right. And by 4 o'clock that very same day, the pipe was fixed. But I'm here to tell you something. There's something about that particular pipe. So when the plumber, so the plumber began breaking down the bricks. We have a solid building. And so behind plastic walls that were brick and brick upon brick. And so when they buried these pipes in the wall, they buried them for a reason. The reason being is that when we got when, we, when the water started to flow, we could not tell whether it was coming from this source or another source. So the plumber and his intellect began to drill and began to knock down bricks and to knock down um, barriers, but there was no pipe. So he began to go under the building, he began to search access points, he began to open up other uh, access opportunities to get to a pipe. There was no pipe. He knocked down, he drilled through another wall, he kept drilling, he knocked down another layer of bricks, there was no pipe. But God said, call your boss. He said, my boss has 35 years in this. And in his 35 years, he has the intellect to not allow a job to defeat him. I said, well, get him. We need him. We need him to come back to the building because something is about to shift in this place. So the boss came. He came. He, 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 told, he told his people, I need you to start drilling in this area. Where they were drilling at was in a whole, total different location where he told them to start drilling. He took them inside the women's bedroom. He said, I can hear the water in here. So that pipe has to be somewhere in here. The other work said, no, folks, I promise you it's not there. No, I'm telling you, I understand what you're saying, but it's not there. He said, take out this whole wall. And I, I need you to take it out now. They began to drill. The, the leak began to get louder and louder. He said, go deeper. They began to move down that wall. And I said, okay. Now we're going to have to take out that stall, and I don't want to have to take out that whole stall, and then we got a whole big mess. He said, keep on drilling. By the time they got to an inch where the urinal was, they were able to get into the direct location where that pipe is. Here's the blessing. What seems like a huge mess or problem, God was able to get the glory out of the situation. So after they broke through the, through the wall, they got to the pipe, the boss man said, well, isn't this something? The pipe isn't even connected to anything that it provides a water source to. I said, oh my God. He said, you know what I'm going to do? All we got to do is take this cap off, cap it off, and put a drywall and you're back in business. I said, that's the God I serve. That's the power I, I serve. And when I can speak a word and I can walk through a building and cry out to the name of God, I have the unbreakable faith to know that God is yet working that thing out. Even when it did not look like we were going to be able to open up on the first day, even when it didn't look like we were going to have access to the building this week. God says what the devil has meant for evil, who am I talking to today? He said what the devil has meant for evil, I'm turning that thing, I'm turning that thing, I'm turning that thing around. I have choose, I have made the choice, I have chosen to submit to the will of God because it, when it doesn't look like I can't see him, I can't hear him, I know he's already there. We just had to get the right person, the right source, the right intellect in the building that can get us to our end result, which is putting that drywall back up and getting us back in operation. And so what, what, what am I saying here today? In order for you to understand God's process, you have to be willing to go through and seeing things through to the end when it does not make sense. Time is God and in order for you to receive what God wants for your life, you have to be willing to submit to the process of waiting. I have made up in my mind that no matter how long it takes, yes, the job gets hard, yes, 
They drive me up the wall, but every day I keep on pressing toward the high calling of Jesus Christ. He said, the, I said, the Bible declared that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even when the wars may rise up against me, in this I am confident. He said he will perfect the very thing that concerns me. So if I have enough understanding and I can equip myself with his word, I understand, beloved, that God is working it out for my good. Point number two, fasting. What are you willing to sacrifice in order to get to the end result of God? Jesus fasts to acknowledge his dependency and to gain spiritual strength through relentless faith and strength through the Holy Spirit. Jesus fasts to acknowledge his dependency. I have a dependency on the Holy Spirit. I am dependent for the Holy Spirit to show up, to show out. I have a dependency that I am going to rely on the Holy Spirit and God's word to get me through. He did this before he ever began public ministry. In the, in the book of Luke 4, verses 1 through 2, you will find that Jesus fasted in order to gain something. He, he fasted in order that he might give up something to gain something. And how many of you know that you've been drinking and hitting the bottle too long, and now God is calling you to give that thing up so that he can do a new work inside of you. And all you got to do is be willing to submit to God's will. What are you willing to give up? Fasting does not cause us to earn something from God, but it helps us to be more receptive to what he wants to do through us and for us. I'm going to say that one more time. Fasting does not cause us to earn something from God, but it, it requires us to be receptive to what he wants to do for us and through us. There are three types of fasting that are described in biblical practice and biblical texts. And I'm reminded of the partial fast in Daniel chapter 10 and verse 3 where it talks about uh, abstaining from delicacies like meats and wine. That's a partial fast. If you can do something that's so small as giving up a piece of meat to draw closer and have a better relationship with God so that God can align your life a little bit, that's all he's asking for. He's not asking for a lot out of your time, but just if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit, like paying your time. See, sometimes we don't want to pay the time, but if you just give a little He'll go five miles ahead of you. All he's asking you to do is just give a little. Try. Give God what you owe him. He gives you his best. Why not give him your best? All he asks is for a little bit. And then fast number two. Complete fast, which is a water or juice fast. And, and utilizing a juice substance will provide you with the, necess the, necess uh, the necessary energy that you need to sustain through an extended period of fasting. And then number three is absolute fast. And that means you would just fast for 40 days and 40 nights of consecration because something happened after they fasted for 40 days and 40 nights of, cons uh, of consecration. And that's just absolutely turning over your plate. I would not drink. I would not put anything to my lips because if I really want to see something, and you got to have some radical, desperate faith to say, I'm turning everything over. I got to see God move. I need God to move expeditiously. And if you are expecting God to do something, you may want to act, do an absolute fast so that you can get the results and the requirements that you're looking for from God. But remember, when you submit to God, it's not always easy, so be so ever vigilant that the devil, he goes around like a roaring lion, seeking those that he can devour. And when you are in the will of God, when you are in the manifold presence of God, the devil is trying to uh, sift you out like never before. And you have to understand that the devil tactics is 
increase to a higher level when you are drawing closer and closer to God. And when adversity and situation starts to manifest, I believe God said you're getting closer to your destiny. He said, though the wars may rise up against you and this your confident, he said, when you go through the valley experience, I've already ran ahead of you to prepare a table in the presence of your enemy. And he said, when I, when you get through out of your valley experience and going through this process and watching me, I'm about to bless you in the presence of your enemy. What do you mean, I'm about to bless you in the presence of your enemy? The Bible said it, but I believe I interpret it like this. When you get ready to eat, your head has got to be present. Come on, somebody. That's a word right there. I said, when you get ready to eat and you are in the presence of your enemy and God said, I anoint your head with oil, your haters, your backbiters, your backstabbers, they got to watch you eat because God is getting ready to set the table in somebody's life. Point number three. Late does not mean delayed. Late but not delayed. God didn't come when he wanted him, but he was surely on time, late, but not delayed. If God is late, he's late on purpose. Hmm. If God is late, he's late on purpose. The miracle is the blessing, but the lateness is the lesson. Who am I preaching to? See, some of us want the blessing, but we don't want to. We, we don't want the lesson. See, some of us want to get blessed and walk in God's glory, but we don't want to be broken. Have you ever been broken by God? Have you ever been in a position where you feel like you wasn't hearing from God? I'm just talking about me. I had to be broken, and sometimes it ain't comfortable being on the potter's wheel, but I had enough faith to know that if God be for me, who can be against me? Have you ever been there where you had to have your fire rekindled? Have you ever been there where you had to have your light relit? Have you ever been there where God had to draw and purge you? And some people don't like being purged by the Holy Spirit, but I'm here to decree and declare to you that is necessary for God's glorification of your life. It's necessary for you to buck and shout and holler and run because God is pulling that thing out of you so that he can step on the inside so that he can step in and clean you so when you speak he and people hear the word of God. When he steps inside of you people receive a word from you. God is willing to do what you can do but he's not willing to do what you won't do. God is asking you to do something, but if you're not willing to do what it is and what the requirement is for you to get to your destiny, how can I expect God to do something in this season? How can I expect God to heal in this season? How can I expect God to reign and dry up this pandemic? How can I expect God to meet my needs if I'm not willing to sacrifice. I've been broken because I had to be better. I had to go through some seasons of being lost in order for God to make my, my little situation better. I had to go through being busted and disgusted for God to shape me and remold me into the likeness of his image. I had to hearken my heart and say they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall not up with wings as eagles. I had to wait on God because time is God and if I truly want to see God's man on my life I have to wait on God. I don't know who I'm preaching to but you lost in your way. You can't see your way through. You, you have strayed away. You have backslidden from the house of God. You have backslidden from your calling in Christ. You have allowed yourself to fall victim to yourself. But I'm here to get you today because I know God can do the unspeakable. And all you got to do is say, I surrender my life to you. Utilize me like you want to utilize me. Use me as a yielded vessel. I surrender my life to you because I know I am nothing without you. Who am I preaching to? 
I told you I'm coming to hit somebody today. You fell short, but that the Bible said we all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. The grace and mercy has kept us. So I'm here to tell you, you can be healed. You can be re, 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 remolded in the likeness and the image of God. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Do you want to give up? Do you want to throw in a towel? Or do you want to take up your bed and walk? Come on, somebody. Who am I preaching to today? I believe and I decree and declare that God is one that's trying to get you to understand that he didn't allow you to uh, take yourself out, but he wants you to get up and walk. He wants to do something new in your life right now. And I decree and declare that God is coming and he's coming like a flood. And this is the season where you have to be willing to experience the anointing of God. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to sacrifice? I'm broken, but I'm better. I'm broken, but I'm better. I had to hurt, but I'm better. I had to lose some things, but I'm better. I'm broken, my finances, but I'm better. I had to lose my mind almost, but I'm better. God didn't allow me to get caught up in my flesh because he caught me before I drowned. I'm talking to some Peters that took their eyes off God just for a small moment. And God is trying to reach out and grab you, but you don't even see the hand of God. Who am I preaching to? This is the time, this is the hour where you need to make a decision in your life who you're going to serve. Choose ye this day. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Who you're going to serve, who you're going to follow. This is a season where you've got to have a made-up mind. And I'm here to tell you, beloved, I got a made-up mind that I will serve the Lord whatever it takes. I submit to his will whatever it takes. I, I don't have time to play church. I don't have time to pray for people who don't want to walk in their healing. But I'm coming for a generation that's willing to submit to the will of God because God wants to show up and show out because I believe better was for you because he needed to get you to that broken place because he had to teach you some things about you. There's a story in the lesson and after the lesson becomes God's manifestation. And see, if you don't get God's revelation, you will miss God's confirmation. And I believe that if you don't get the confirmation of God, that he's calling you back into his will, you're going to miss the manifestation of God. Come on, somebody. I believe that there is two places that we have to make a decision. And we have to make a decision whether we go on to, to heaven or hell. But I'm reminded today with a pandemic like this, one of them is crowded. But only the chosen can get in. So you got to make a decision with which way you're going to go. Because I believe that even when heaven is proud, there's a, there's a space with your name on it. There's a seat at the right hand of the Father with your name on it. One of them is proud. And which one are you going to go? Which one? Do you know where you're going? Have, have you made up in your mind that I will surrender my life to you? Have you made up in your mind I'm going to give in my heart I believe that you died on the precious cross. You shed your precious blood for me and I surrender my life. Have you made the decision? Your finances I love you. don't know how you're going to pay your bills. What decision are you making today? What decision? You try to do it on your own but it's not working. What decisions are you making today? I believe God is calling you to strategic planning in your life. And in this season, you got to be on God's plan. You got to be in the book of remembrance. That when he pulls open the book of remembrance and he goes down your chapters after chapters, what report can God read about your life? What are you willing to sacrifice? I'm broken, but I'm better. I had to go through a process, but I'm better. I submitted my life to God, but I'm better. I, I worship, I give God all of me, but I'm better. I can walk through any adverse situation because I know God is the glory. What are you willing to give up? 
Beloved, what are you willing to do to get to the other side of God's manifestation? He has it for you. It's there for you. You have to be willing to give up something. God is willing to do what you can't do, but what are you willing to do so that God can do the most miraculous thing in your life? God is willing to do it, but what are you willing to sacrifice? Late, but not delayed. Late, but not delayed. Broken, but I'm better. He was late, but he was on time. He was late, but I was blessed. He was late, but I was healed. I'm broken, but I'm better. Choose ye this day who you will serve. And I choose to serve the Lord. I choose to walk in God's grace. I choose to walk in God's favor because I knew that it was a lesson in my breaking season that God has set the table and I'm eating in the presence of my enemy because when I can walk through my valley and I, there's been many valleys and I'm telling you, when you get that book, Pigs in the Parlor, be prepared for the enemy to throw out his, his highest tactics, his highest wiles, because the devil don't like you studying him. And when you know every move that the devil is trying to throw at you, you can dodge every blow the enemy throws at you. Because my rod and my staff comforts me. And I'm getting ready to eat at the table in the presence of my enemy. Better because I had to be broken. Better because I had to be broken. Better because I had to be broken. Good and gracious God, thank you for your holy word. Thank you for your omnipotent power. I pray right now that somebody heard this word and they're broken, but they're better now because of you. God, I pray that you begin to meet the needs of your people right now. Somebody's broken and they want to be better. Revive them, restore them. Uh, pick them up, turn them around, plant them back on solid ground. God, we need you to do the overflow. We need you to move like never before. We need we need you to do the unthinkable, the un unexpected. We need you to revive a generation in a time such as this. Send your reign, send your reign, send your omnipotent reign in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm glad to be in this number one more time. It's good for me to be afflicted that I might know your decree. So right now, Father, do it for your glory, do it for your will because you're great, you're wonderful, you're awesome, you're ostentatious. And we know that you will do it uh, because your word declared. If you believe it, give God some praise right there because it, it was the praise that you gave him on credit that he's able to go ahead of you in your future and work out that thing in your present because he, it is in the present that God builds your future. Broken, but you're coming out and you'll be better when you come out. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, we praise God for that powerful word, amen, from our brother, amen. And just in case you join us for this virtual worship, we don't want to take it for granted that you are saved. We don't want to take it for granted that you have a personal relationship with God for yourself. Let me encourage you right where you are. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, I believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So right where you are, you don't have to be in the sanctuary, but you can confess Jesus and invite him to come into your life today. Or maybe you just desire prayer. Yet Adam would believe that God still hears and answers prayer. We want to pray with you. Amen. We want to minister to you. Write down the screen. You see the phone number. You can call us, reach out to us. And we want to be a blessing and encouragement to you. We want to remind you, brother, brothers and sisters, that during this season, you must make sure that you wash your hands, watch your distance, wear your mask whenever you are going out in public. Praise God for no more blessings flow.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord light up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both today, tomorrow, and even forevermore. Amen.